Hey guys, uh, picking up pretty much right where we left off in that last video, where I word vomited, talked about a lot of things. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. In this video, we're going to focus on R2 Modman. This is the same thing as Thunderstorm Mod Manager uh, that comes with Overwolf. It looks the same. Uh, it has a little bit less games to choose from and a few other things. So first thing is, where do I get it? Where do I get R2 Modman? If you're playing Valheim, you can get R2 Modman here uh, under valheim.thunderstore.io. R2 Modman comes as a download. You'll see an install with Mod Manager button. But the problem is, this is the Mod Manager, so you can't use that button. Use manual download. So I'm going to download it. I'm going to show you what it looks like, explain it a little bit more. Uh, so we're going to unzip this. I use 7-zip. We're going to get it into a new folder. So inside of this, you're going to get an executable. Put this wherever you want to. This is a setup executable. You can leave it in your downloads, whatever you want. This is going to actually install RTModman for you. Inside of RTModman, you are not going to be here. We're going to say change game. This will probably be how it pops up. It's going to look just like this to you. Your first questions between Valheim are, can I create a mod pack for my game? Can I create a mod pack uh, that is for my clients? Which I've explained in the last video. Yes, you can. And yes, it does download all of their stuff. But the main question that most people ask is, hey, can I manage my server using a mod pack? The answer is yes, but not all mods that you download are going to be server side. So if you're hosting the server locally, you can click on the server tab, then click Valheim then install and download things and set things up. Um, I'm not going to necessarily show this process. If you have any questions, jump into the Thunderstore or R2 Modman Discord uh, to be able to talk about that. So main thing is choose your game. Again, we're going to just choose Valheim. You're not going to have all these profiles like me. You're probably only going to have the default one up here at the top. So I'm going to talk about a few things. I'm going to tell you about the pros and cons. Um, of creating new profiles uh, and, and why we choose Thunderstore most of the time over Nexus or over Vortex as a mod manager. So first things first is the mod manager for R2 creates profiles or folders that contain the mods for each profile individually. Vortex can do this but the downside is, is that Vortex actually is not as up to date. And funnily enough, Nexus still gets their BEP and X from this Thunderstore download here on Valheim. So they are directing you to Thunderstore anyways. Most of the mod authors have moved to Thunderstore due to Nexus's latest and greatest TOS, um, basically claiming control of mods or whatever they saw as a reason to jump to Thunderstore, which is, in my opinion, leagues better. The mod manager is better, a lot less issues. But the benefit of R2 Modman, the major benefit of R2 Modman, is it does not mess with your default game install. So you, you can have all of these mods and then have different subset of mods inside of your game installation folder and be just fine. All of these profiles are loaded on top of Valheim. So it'll, it'll launch Valheim through Steam, it'll load your mods here, and you're good to go. You can have all these profiles here. Uh, it doesn't install any unnecessary things inside of your folders. Um, it does not mess with the default game install at all. Uh, and it's, it's just overall is cleaner. It knows how to unpack the mods a little bit better. Um, it organizes things for you, and it's super fast and easy to not only share the mod packs legally, by the way, no redistribution, um, very easily with other people. So, speaking of, important update. I'm going to explain this feature here for a second, and I'm going to show you how to do it, what it looks like, um, and, and how you can set this up. So you can import a new profile or update an existing profile. So if someone uh, sends you a code or a file, you can choose one of these two options. I'm going to say import new profile. You can choose from a file or from a code. There is a downside to using a code. So a code, if your mod pack is too big, the storage that uh, Thunderstore currently uses for mod packs 
or shared codes in this case, they store all of this stuff in the cloud. They have a memory limit on it, and they also have a time limit on it. So the memory limit means if you get an error trying to export your profile as code, um, it, you're going to get an error, and I'll attempt to show you that with a big mod pack. Uh, but if you get an error for that, if you're trying to do it as a code or exporting as a code, you're going to get an error. It's going to say, hey, this is too big or, or something of that nature. Just switch it to a file. Files are or local shared files that will tell them to download what they need to download, and it doesn't get stored in the cloud. The other downside of sharing a code is that it has a time limit, aka I think it's about three hours, but after about three hours, that code will expire and you can't continuously use that same code anymore. You can continuously use the same file. So, how do you make a file? How do you make a code? So let's say I have this uh, permatesting mod pack here, or m set of mods, this isn't necessarily a mod pack. So we can go into settings, and then scroll down, and you can either export profile as file, or export profile as code. So exported code can be shared with friends to get an identical profile quickly and easily. Same thing with a file. This shares configs for local mods and downloaded mods. It does not share imported local mods. So the DLLs, the physical mods themselves. Main reason why is because if it's not on Thunderstore and you've packaged it in as a local mod, which is this import local mod option, what that means is, is that Thunderstore would be allowing you to redistribute that DLL either illegally or without permissions in general. So what they do is allow you to at least share the configs, but they don't allow you to share the DLL. Uh, main reason why is because they want the people to download it legally um, or with permission from the mod author, which of course is hopefully on the mod author's page and not zipped up anywhere. So export profile as file, export profile as code. So we're going to export profile as code. It says that we get this crazy code and it says it's been copied to your clipboard. All you have to do is give it to your friends. So just to see that it's already copied to my clipboard, I'm just going to paste it here. And this is the same code that we just got. So it's good to go. You don't have to highlight it. You don't have to click it. You don't have to do anything. Now let's say I am your friend. I am, I've got my game. I have only the default profile. I want to import the code that you just gave me. So you're going to go into import, import new profile from code and paste. So if you notice, it has the same name as what my existing one is. They can change it. They can call it, you know, a uh, crazy awesome pack. I don't know. And say create. It's going to say 100% imported. Uh, imported just means, hey, we imported it. We got it in. It's good. Uh, it can stop there for just a minute. Just wait on it. I promise you, even though it says 100%, um, and you're, you've been sitting there for a split second, it might take a little bit of time because it's doing a lot of things for you. AKA, if we click on this, because I'm light on mods, I only have 27, um, and most of these are kind of quality of life mods, it re-downloaded all of these plugins for me. So depending on your internet, depends on how fast that is. But also, it downloaded all of the configs. So if we go to settings, browse profile folder, X config, you'll notice that I have all the configs, and we're inside of the profile that we just made. So all of those configs got shared, um, everything's here, but if we go to X plugins, you'll notice that my plugins folder is a lot neater than it was a minute ago when I showed it to you. And I'll even show you the change profile, we'll go to permatesting and click it. So this is the original, and we'll browse the profile folder of this one. So we'll pull this up on the side, and we'll pull the other one up. So you can see Bepinex plugins, Bepinex plugins. You'll see that they aren't the same. And you're probably, if you haven't been paying attention, wondering, oh my god, why aren't they the same? The answer is, these right here are custom mods. The, these right here are custom mods. These back here are custom mods. If these were inside of the plugins folder, they still wouldn't be shared. And that's because they are not linked via the um, profile. So if we go back to the profile, we'll notice that it has a state folder in here, and it also has a mods.yaml folder. If 
if we open this mods YAML folder up, we'll be able to see all of this crazy stuff in here that's linking all of the mods together, telling them what to download, where to go, where to get it, what the icon is, where to find the icon, um, and, and taking a look at it, you know, all the mod descriptions, everything, right? So because it's not a part of Thunderstore, they don't get it. So we did not redistribute the hammer pins, hoods, or the, the personal mod that I made for Little Busy, um, the penetrator, piece manager, none of that. None of that got shared with the, um, the other person. So the only ones that did are the ones that are Thunderstore. And these are all sorted by author and then mod name. So author, mod name, author, mod name, author, mod name, all the way down. Except for Epic MMO system, I'm assuming the author and the mod name are the exact same. So that pops in just like that. So we've shared our profile uh, and we could do the same thing as a file. It works the same, except for it's more persistent. So additionally, please make sure that if you download the mod manager, that you are setting up your Steam directories correctly, right? Mine are downloaded directly on the C drive. Um, it works for me. There are additional things that you can do. So if you're having issues, right? Like if we launch the game right now and we have this perma testing, every time you launch the game, it creates a file called a log output dot log file. All that file is, is a copy of this console window that opens alongside your game. Okay. And what that does, as you can see, this is gray. Gray means I've got debug mode turned on. Um, and I'm able to see debug logs or logs that are there to help me find issues um, and not just informational. So info, debug, right? Now you're wondering where can I find this log output log file if I booted my game, I got errors, it crashed, I got warnings. What do I do? Where do I find it? So inside of your game, of course, you can see that fast link mod loaded. We can click on the servers, uh, my minimal UI loaded, all the good stuff, right? Now, let's say my game crashed. I don't have a game loaded right now. Let's say my game crashed and I jumped into a Discord and I said, hey guys, my game crashed. I need help. Um, I don't know which mod is causing it. Um, let's, let's find that log output.log. So this is going to be in the same location on the client as it is on the server. And all I mean by that is it's going to be inside of the BepinX folder and it's going to be called log output dot log it's right here now if this file is not created or is not updated every time you boot your server or boot your client that means bepinx is not loading correctly and you need to reinstall it you need to reset it up get it working so this is written every single time you can see that this is at 12 14. Um, it is now 12 15 in the morning for me so if i hit start again We'll take a look at this and we'll actually see this jump to zero and then we'll see it start um, loading more information. So it jumped to zero, it's 12.15. And then we'll see this number slowly start to go up as it writes more and more data to the file. So we see it at two, we see it at four. That's how you know that it's loading. So I'm gonna stop it right here. It's gonna stop right at word is love is up to date, right? And I'm gonna close my game. I'm just gonna close it right there. That's all I want in this log output. I've reached uh, how far I want to go. I'll open this up in Visual Studio Code. And then we'll be able to scroll through this. So we can scroll and we can see that it stopped exactly where I said it was. This file is that console just right here. And if you notice, all the debug statements are gone. That comes from, you can use the config editor here, or you can open your profile and go to configs. Um, this is the same thing. It's just reading this. Uh, so in Bepinex configs, this is where we're going to change that. But we can, we're going to change it inside of R2. We're going to say Bep in X. Well, that didn't help because the whole folder is Bepinex config. But it's right here. So we can say edit config. And we have the chain loader logging, logging.console. So logging.console, console is the window that popped up. Logging.disk is what is going to actually write to the file. So we have the log messages to disk enabled. We don't tell it to append every single time. We um, tell it to overwrite on game startup by default. And we tell it to log everything, right? 
So you can set all this up, go through this file, set things up, mess with some settings. Make sure that you have debug logs turned on um, if you want to see debug logs, if you're trying to debug an issue. The additional things that you can do is, let's say you want to, you don't have that many mods and you want to figure out what caused a brand new issue uh, that was created when you downloaded stuff. So let's say Easy Spawner was having a problem. You could just click disable. What this does in the background, if we click in here and go to Bepinex plugins, uh, Cooley Easy Spawner. What that does in the background is it changes it with a dot old extension and we'll, we'll change that back. So we'll go back in here and we'll see that it now doesn't have the dot old extension anymore. We can see it's got the correct file formats. Um, what that does is it forces it not to load. Uh, it makes it to where it thinks that it's an old file and it's not an actual plugin or a DLL or anything like that to load. So you can debug all your stuff like this. You can also go to settings, uh, profile, and disable or enable all mods. So let's say you've gotten all the way down to the nitty gritty, maybe like five mods left, but you don't want to go and click uh, 22 more of the things. You could just click this and say enable, or you can click this and say disable. You can change the profile at any time, import local mods, update all mods. You can even refresh the mod list. Make sure that you have the latest and greatest mod list here. Switch your themes. Um, go through to locations. Locations is where all of your Valheim directory, Steam directory, and whatnot is set up. Profile again is this. And then under all, you'll have, of course, all of those crazy settings. Hopefully, this makes a little bit of sense. Uh, if you guys have more questions, please let me know. But one of the main questions is, hey, I've got all these profiles. Uh, can I start the game vanilla again? Yes, you can. You can click start vanilla here instead of start modded, and you'll load without any mods. Unless, here's the kicker, unless your Steam folder, if we jump into Valheim here, manage, browse local files, unless you have Bepinex plugins inside of this. Right? So if I was to load vanilla, yes, I would be loading vanilla. But if you have mods here, this could potentially cause a conflict. AKA, this is the default install of Valheim for me, is on my C drive. Um, I have all these extra mods. You know, Vainheim expanded and ascended because they're not in the plugins folder. They're not going to load. Uh, so in Bepinex plugins, these will load. That could cause an issue. Make sure that this is a clean installation of Valheim. You can get a very clean installation by simply deleting all those files and then going to Properties, uh, Local Files, Verify Integrity. Um, that'll freshly download a new version of just Valheim. Okay, so do that. Set things up, guys. Hopefully that is a good enough tutorial on R2 Modman um, and how to set things up. So... If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I will link you guys um, in the description where R2 Modman is, Valheim Thunderstore. I'll even link you to the Odin Plus team mods that I would recommend, as well as mine. So I'll link you to my page. I'll link you to Odin Plus, and uh, just go through, find some mods that you like. Go to go to Thunderstore.com or sorry, Thunderstore.io. Uh, download the mods. I don't recommend downloading mod packs only because. Mod packs themselves are not configured by you. They are configured most likely for a specific server and a specific purpose. So be careful when you download a mod pack. Uh, mod packs could cause things to download extra mods via the dependencies that you might not know about. Um, and what that will cause you to do is not know what's going on with your game. If you download your mods one by one and you test and you make sure that they work, then you'll be much, much happier. I promise you. Create a mod pack of your own. Try not to use any other mod packs unless they are highly trusted. Um, downloads do not necessarily mean trusted. Downloads could simply mean that there's a bunch of idiots out there that clicked the button uh, and, and didn't heed my warning of don't download a mod pack you did not make yourself. Okay? I'll see you guys in the next video.